Hi, I'm Andrea Kazee, and welcome to Simple As That. Today we are at Indigo Art Mercantile in Phillipsburg, Kansas, with Melissa Runyon, who is the owner and operator of this store. And we are going to have a great day on our show today. We are going to, first, Melissa is going to show us how to paint on glass, and we are also going to build indoor terrariums. Melissa, are you ready to get started? Sure. Hey, Andrea, and thanks uh, for having me or letting me host you. Um, anybody that's looked at Pinterest has probably seen the paint and wine glasses, and they're very cool. But here at Indigo Art, we're about repurposing and reusing things we already have. So I have several examples of other things that I've painted on. This milk glass, a little cut glass jar, some bottles and things like that. Just something different from wine glasses, but obviously the concept is going to be the same uh, as painting on glass. Yeah, these Any are just kind of glasses. simple things that you can buy at Dollar General that are really plain and then you can really make them your own, can't right. you? And the candle holders is my project I'm doing today. And I had those here in the store and just thought they were kind of tired and could use some sprucing up and thought a nice paint job on all three of them would kind of make them more of a set. So the supplies that you need for painting on glass are, of course, the paint. And I like to use Americana Gloss Enamel. I've tried a few other kinds and uh, just felt like they weren't as smooth and flowed as nicely on the glass. And those are available in your store, correct? Yes. So that's what we like to use. Um, the next thing are brushes. And oh, of course, whatever job you're doing, it's always nice to have good tools. And uh, brushes are probably the most important thing for this project, especially since the glass is so thick. I like using these round uh, pointed brushes and they're very soft bristle, but any kind of brush like this is a round filbert that would work really well if it has a nice uh, soft bristle to it. And of course you're going to want a really tiny uh, detail brush if you're doing anything very detailed. Uh, so alcohol to clean the glass with is great. And just some other things you probably already have around the house, paper towels and Q-tips. and your design. Now, as far as a design on clear glass, it's very handy because you can just draw off your design. And this is a, a paper that I just taped right in here. So you can just print it off, put it right in there, and then you just kind of fill in the colors. Right, and so this is an example of that pattern. And then you just had, you could just trace around and, and paint within the lines. And then you also added on the bottom mm -hmm. the brown with some little puppy paws. Yeah, just a super cute idea. Personally, I like to just uh, freehand usually, but you can get designs anywhere. So my techniques for painting on glass Oh, I forgot to tell you, you need a cup of water. But you're not going to want to use a lot of water when you're painting. So I'm going to take a dry brush, lay out my paint on a palette. I just use a foam plate usually. I'm just going to put out a little paint on here. And I use, try to use just a tiny bit because it, it, uh, it will dry up pretty quick. And you probably don't really need a whole lot of paint. I usually mix colors because I don't want to have every single color open, you know, and right. paint. There right. are several uh, different colors. But for this project, I'm doing this little uh, cherry blossom painting on the glass. But to show you the technique, I'm going to work on this uh, glass frame I have up here. So I'm just blending a little bit of brown and black. And you're going to want to have quite a lot of paint on your brush and I'm just going to start uh, you know laying out my tree shape and trees are pretty easy it's part of the reason I did this and you want to keep a lot of paint on your brush and not uh, what I call scrub if you push too hard um, you can see the paint will just kind of come off as you're painting so I like to keep a lot of paint on my brush and I'll just lay it on kind of, kind of thick. You want a good, nice coat. When you're done with your brush, you want to put it in the water because it will dry out. And I usually just grab another brush or clean off the brush that I have. 
and dry it off really well. So for this design, I've painted my basic tree shape. And for the flowers, I'm just mixing some red and white to make a pink. And I'm just doing three little dots, dot, dot, dot. And I'm just going to go around and put those wherever I think you need a blossom. While I'm painting the pink, my, my brown has dried a bit. So I'm going to go back to that and kind of touch that up. Usually you're probably going to put two coats on. You want, you know, you want a nice heavy coat. So I'm going to kind of touch up some of those places where the paint didn't stick. Now if you make a mistake, not a big deal. You can use a Q-tip to wipe off little, little places. Or if it dries, you can even take a razor or whatever and um, it'll scrape right off. You know, and you can, you can kind of start back over. If you paint a whole glass and you hate it, you can soak it in some soapy water and uh, basically scrub it off and start over. So after you get done with your painting, this type of paint has to be set in the oven because at this point, obviously I just showed you it will scrape right off. The manufacturer directions are to wait for three days to let the paint thoroughly, thoroughly dry. Okay. After your three days, you're going to take and put this on a cookie sheet or whatever. Obviously, I set it upside down. Um, this is a really important point. Once you have it ready to bake, you're going to put it in a cold oven. Turn the temperature to 350 and let the glass heat up with the oven. Okay. Glass will break if you change the temperatures too quickly. Okay. So to temper the glass, you want to put it in a cold oven. Turn it to 350. Once it's reached 350, uh, about 15 minutes. And that's all, just 15 minutes. Uh huh. That's really in, not very long at all. In my experimenting, which is <laughs> what I do about half the time, yeah, it's about 30 minutes. You know, it's yeah. going to depend on your oven, but if you leave it in for 45, it's not going to catch on fire or anything. Okay. It's, it, it won't melt. Fine. The glass won't melt or anything no. like that because it has to. No. It has to get to a much higher temperature. One thing do you do have to watch is I did bake something, I baked that little uh, bottle with the lid on it, thinking that the metal was fine. Oh. I forgot about the little plastic piece that was inside there. Yeah, the seal. <laughs> so that, that wasn't very good because that was like totally stuck on there. Ah. So, you know, make sure it's just glass that you're baking. Okay. And then after the 15 minutes, the same thing. You're going to turn the oven off and let, and it, let it let the glass stay in the oven while it cools down okay because you don't want to take it right out that could cause it to crack or break okay so melissa once that it's gone through that process and then it's completely cooled is it dishwasher safe or do they recommend just hand washing the manufacturer says that it's dishwasher safe personally i would not take a hand painted item and put it in a dishwasher right. i'm probably always going to hand wash those and i do have several wine glasses that we use because i don't I don't make things just for show usually. I use the things I make. So I have several wine glasses that we use and I have washed them several times just and no by problem hand. At all. And they're, the paint stays on really well. Great, great. So just to sum up with a few tips, um, you know, always keep a good amount of paint on your brush and, and don't scrub because you'll just end up wiping the paint off. And if the paint gets a little dry, it'll start crumbling if you go over it too many times. Okay, all right. So you wanna let let it dry good between coats. Um, make sure the surface is clean, and I think I might have skipped that step. You need to um, clean it with alcohol to make sure you get all the soap residue and fingerprints off. Okay. And, that, and that's most specifically right where you're going to apply right. the paint. Right. So if you were going to paint here, you would clean would here first, and then the later alcohol. you could go back and you could clean. Like on this one where you paint at the bottom, you could go mm -hmm. back and clean that later, right. and then paint on it, and then you would just let it dry upside down, right? Sure. And then when you do these in the oven, uh, any type of glass, do you, when you put them in the oven, do you put them in uh, I just, upside down? I put them in so... Um, as little, you know, so hopefully none of the paint is touching anything. Okay. And another thing on glasses, I, I know on this one we've painted right up to the rim, but you probably don't want to paint all the way around right up to the rim because I don't like to 
put your lips to, against the right. paint. Right. So okay. this one's okay because you're supposed to do it this way anyway. Yes. Um, what, you know, just let the paint dry for the recommended amount of time and bake it all according to the manufacturer's suggestions and you should come out with a great beautiful finished product. All right. Well, this is really interesting and I really love the puppy glass and I, there are so <laughs> many really fun ideas and these would really make great um, gift items for family mm -hmm. and friends. Um, something else that will be available is the instructions on how to do this will be available on our Next Tech Pinterest page. So you'll want to be um, headed to there if you would like to um, learn more about how, to, how this process works and how you can make this work for you. Thanks, Melissa. Hi, I'm Deborah Anderson, the host of Local Flavor. It's a show where we get cooking with people who make great food and who love to share the tips and tricks that help us learn to make it ourselves. Whether it's sweets or savories, Local Flavor has something for everyone who likes to eat. You can find Local Flavor on Next Tech Local One, nexttech.com, or watch when it's convenient for you with video on demand. When you own a business, it's important to protect your property, employees, and customers. Nextech Surveillance is a completely customizable solution for businesses of all sizes. Start your Nextech Surveillance system for only $125 per month. Nextech will professionally install four surveillance cameras, 15 meg internet, a wireless router, and you'll also receive a free 8-inch Windows tablet to monitor your cameras with. Certain restrictions apply. Call Nextech today and ask how you can protect your business with Nextech Security. What a girl wants in her home kitchen. Ease of use, flexibility, fun, the latest kitchen design, Frigidaire Professional Real Stainless Steel for fewer finger smudges, a French door refrigerator, convection cooking, a quiet dishwasher. Have the staff at Genuine Appliance in Hayes demonstrate new Frigidaire Professional Appliances to find what you want. Genuine Appliance at 1224 East 27th in Hayes. Everything a girl wants. Tune in to Next Tech Local 1 for what's happening now so you can learn about interesting events and places that you can visit in our area. Discover new museums and attractions. Hear about interesting places and people. Learn about great organizations that you'd like to support and make plans for your family to attend fun events like fairs, festivals, concerts, and so much more. If you'd like your event to be featured, contact us at Next Tech at least two months in advance. Tune in to Next Tech Local 1 for what's happening now so you can find out about all the great things going on in our area. Hi, welcome back to Simple As That. Melissa, we're going to build some terrariums, some indoor terrariums, and we're going to um, have this available for you on Pinterest. We've created um, this how to build a terrarium um, easy cheat sheet. Um, I found one very similar to this, and I felt it was super, super helpful when I went to go shopping for all the ingredients, because I have never done anything like this before, and they are so popular right now. I thought, you know what, let's just give it a try and see what we can do. There, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna build some indoor terrariums and these little glass goblets, and then we're also going to build um, some indoor terrarium, or an, just an indoor little potted gift that you can give to your mother for Mother's Day or to a teacher That's or to a Sunday school teacher. That's so, a great idea. All right, so basically, all we have to do is follow this. Um, it's just um, beautiful to be able to see all the layers through the glass. As, as you can see in these larger terrariums, you can, um, there's like an, almost an ecosystem all the way through. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with some really clean sand. Um, I, I did a little research and one of the things they really recommend is if you got some sand when you went to the beach as you know a keepsake, mm -hmm. don't use it because there's already bacteria and lovely right. living things living in it. And if you start with a bad foundation, you're going to end up with a smelly sure, yeah. and, and pretty much ruin a beautiful project that you've just done. And this stuff is fairly inexpensive, pretty cheap. You can even get play sand and that will work just fine as well. So you want a, a, a nice thin layer of sand and it doesn't take a lot, but it's just the base to kind of get things going. So we'll start with that. And you kind of swirl it around get your base started. And then the next item is some larger rocks. And I have some black ones here. And so you just kind of fit, pick a few that will fit nicely in the bottom. And where this 
This guy is so little. If you can see here, I'm just gonna try to pick and choose just a few of these rocks, maybe five or so, just to give it a nice layer. And what this, ba this base layer of larger rocks does is we need to add air down below. We want the root system and um, we don't want it to get boggy down there with moisture right. because it will get moldy. And so that's what this is gonna do is add air. So then the next layer is some larger pebbles and we have white and we have just some natural stones. And so we just wanna sprinkle a little of those in the bottom. And again, this is another kind of a, a layer of air. About like that? Or yeah, I, I just think that will be just fine. I maybe used just a little bit too much. All right, activated charcoal is next on our list. Now this is something I had never, I, I had to think about it. And I asked a friend if she had ever heard of this. She's like, yeah, it's what they use in aquarium filters. So I, mm. that's where you go to find it. It's in the, like at Walmart, it, that's I think the only place I found it because that's really, an, or you could probably find it at a store that sells fish. Um, but aquarium department, if you know where there is one, then go there and that's where you'll find this. It's really messy stuff. It, it is charcoal. And so if you get it on your fingers, yeah, it's gonna leave a, a sooty black residue. So I recommend either using, don't use your fingers. Just use, either pour it in or um, use a scoop of some kind. And what you'll wanna do is kinda start flattening out the layers and kinda keep keep it as flat and dense as possible. So we're gonna move that activated charcoal. Now, that charcoal layer is really important because these glass goblets don't have a hole in the bottom for any moisture to come out. And so that activated charcoal will um, kind of, it neutralizes the scents, it absorbs a lot of the um, moisture and just helps keep it smelling um, fresh right. instead of moldy or mildewy. Mm -hmm. um, now, you can yeah. buy terrarium soil, which I didn't realize, but they, they do make just ter special soil for terrariums, and it already has activated charcoal in it, and so you may not necessarily have to use right. that. Um, so then, our next layer after that is some sphagnum or peat moss. Now, peat moss is amazing stuff. This stuff will absorb 80, like 80 times the moisture. And so it actually act, it acts as a, an amazing layer between the activated charcoal and the soil. And it will absorb the moisture so that the soil can then, as needed... Maybe just a little more. Okay. And it is messy. This is a messy process. <laughs> no doubt about it. But it's fun. And especially fun for kiddos. Well, and I think anytime you're doing craft stuff, you probably want to work on a nice vinyl tablecloth. That yeah, you can newspapers, or not something. Not on your nice table. No, not on your nice table. Okay, and then our next layer is your soil, and I'm just using a good um, topsoil or a potting soil that is for well drain. It's not supposed to. Um, hold a lot of moisture in. It's got, it's a miracle grow, so it already has a little bit of food in it, nutrients for the plants. And we'll put in a nice base layer, and then we'll fill it in as needed. Okay. And then make a little hole in there for your plant. And the last layer is, um, any plants and ornaments that you may have. And we have um, purchased um, some succulents from a local store. And many times you will see that there are more than, this one has three plants mm -hmm. in it. So you don't have to spend a lot of money, but you can really stretch these a long way. So this one has three. So we could actually put one in yours and one in mine, and then have one for another project. So what we'll do, we'll tap it out and you wanna make sure that you release the roots really well. In fact, some of the Pinterest people that I researched with said to really 
shake it off and release those roots. They've been bound up in those tiny little pots and you're gonna put them in a new home so it helps them if you hmm. can release them. That's good to know. I usually just leave them right in the soil they're in. Yeah, right, and they really, that, that is one of the things they really recommended. So almost get it down to where that's just the roots and that's all you see, okay? And then we'll put those down in there. And then you may need a little bit more soil to kind of fill around the edge, so. I'm just putting one or more. And just press it down so it's kind of. Okay. Oh, it's falling over. And then we're gonna take and fill in, here, you need more? Yeah. Okay, here. Mm. Yeah, and then just fill around. These openings are pretty small, so it makes it <laughs> difficult. You have to really just use a couple fingers down in there. Ah, and it makes it challenging to get enough soil around the outside of the plant that it will stand up right. But the trick is, I think, also we're going to put some sand or gravel around the top and that's going to finish it off. So once we get our plant situated, I'm going to put a little bit more in mine too. There we go. And once we have it, I think that's just right, then I'm going to take some gravel and just finish off the top so that the plant has kind of a stable surrounding. Put a few white ones in there. And then succulents don't need a lot of water. Um, many people overwater them and they get kind of moldy. Right. They really, once a week, a few sprays from a spray bottle and you'll be good to go. Well, so, that's good for me then. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm not very good about watering plants too much. So all you have to do is spray it with a spray bottle a few times just to get a little moisture down in there and you're done. And We'll grab a paper towel and kind of wipe off the outside. And there we go. Okay. Now, the last thing I quickly want to show is um, how to make a little succulent gift. And it's really not hard. All we have to do, we can skip most of these steps because it's a potted a plant that has a hole in the bottom. So we don't need the sand, we don't need the large gravel, we just need a little bit of gravel in the bottom and not much, just a few pieces. Then we just need our potting soil and these are little pots so they don't take a lot. And then we'll take, I have a little guy sitting here ready to go and we'll clear him out of some of his old, release his roots a bunch and set him down in there. Fill it in with a little bit more. And again, we'll put some pretty rocks on the top to stabilize him and spray him. Clean him all off and give him a little drink. And the nice thing about using miracle Grow potting soil, you don't have to worry about feeding them for a while right. because that already has the food in there for them. Oops. And then last but not least, we created these fun little printables. And this one says on one side, thank you for helping me grow. And then on the other side, it just tells you quickly how to care for your new succulent. And you and can just print those off and cut them. In. Yep, and with a popsicle stick. And there you have a sweet little gift. Fold it in half and glue your stick in there. Yep. Is that how you did it? Yep, and that's, and that printable will be available on our print Pinterest page as well. And then we will also have how to build your terrarium. We will have this printable available on our Pinterest page as well. That's so a great it, visual. It I is mean, a great it visual. It's so easy to know exactly what to do. Yeah, you can just print this off, take it with you to the store, and get all your ingredients, and away you go. So, thank you.